welcome to Catholic Current, where we discuss our faith and give you an update on events affecting the church in the United States. From Washington, D.C., I'm Mara Moser. Catholic schools play an important role in the education and formation of young people across this country. This week, we are focusing on the issue of how Catholic schools are serving the needs of students with special needs. I'd like to welcome Mary Pat Donahue, Executive Director of the Secretariat of Catholic Education, and Dr. Maggie Hubbard from the National Catholic Partnership on Disability. Welcome, Maggie. Mary Pat, it's good to see you again. Thank you, Mara. Always good to be here. So I want to start with the bishops will soon release, or we anticipate, an update on their pastoral letter on how the church serves people with disabilities. How are we serving? How are Catholic schools serving students with special needs today? Well, it's an interesting question because, first of all, it is a high priority for Bishop Daly, our, our chairman of the Committee on Catholic Ed, um, and the other members of the committee as well, that we take some of the good efforts that have begun, but really expand them greatly. Uh, there's much more that we can do. And I think what's important to remember in Catholic education is that our understanding of what education is really positions us to do this better than anyone. You know, we, we've fallen into sort of a, a modern understanding of education that says it's career and college readiness and preparation. And you think, well, in that construct, yeah, it's kind of hard to admit kids who might have intellectual disabilities or, or other learning differences that, that make it difficult. But as Catholics, we understand education as being formative really developing what's most human in, in our kids, teaching them to love what's beautiful, to value what's good, and to pursue what's true. Um, and so I think it's much in our wheelhouse. Uh, it does require uh, some mindset changes and um, some rethinking, but it is very doable, and I think it's an extremely important priority. Maggie, you have been an educator for more than 35 years focused on inclusivity and accessibility for students with special needs. What are some concerns that you might hear from other parents and how do you address those concerns? Well, from, from parents, the, the concern is generally, is there going to be a place for my child? Um, whether we're talking about students with high incidence disabilities like uh, learning disabilities, um, uh, ADHD, things like that, or low incidence disabilities like intellectual disabilities or maybe autism spectrum disorders, they, they are, are looking for a place for their child that might be more um, in keeping with their faith. And a lot of times that those places are not available to them. And so from a, a, the perspective of the schools, they're concerned about whether or not they actually can do it. Do they have the, in, the in, instructional background? Do they have the resources? Do they have the money? That type of thing. So it comes down to the, the parents really want this for their children, uh, particularly if they've got a situation where they've got their, their other children going to a Catholic school. Is, is that school also going to be able to support and educate their child with the disability? And then, but then they run into the, the problem with the schools, questioning whether or not they can do it. And you know, then there's always the understanding that there is the public school down the street that has, you know, that has the resources to, um, or at least the structure, I should say, to um, handle the education of children with special needs. We know that one in five children has a disability I'm including one of my own who has dyslexia. And so parents of students with special needs tend to have to advocate on behalf of their child a lot. What are some ways that Catholic schools are positioned to support not only the students but the families? Well, I think that the, the positioning comes from the, just the overall attitude that we are, we are a family. We are a family in Christ. We come to the table together to celebrate the Eucharist. So I think that from that perspective, there, there's that, that we're coming at it from, from that idea about you know, all of us being together. Um, 
that, though, is not always the thing that becomes the priority when we're talking about things like including the kids um, with special needs in the schools. And so I, I think that from the perspective of we've got, like Mary Pat was saying, our, you know, who we are as Catholic schools, that sets us up perfectly for this idea of, of including all, of, all students. Um, we just have to also uh, realize that we, we have, that we've got that, that mission, that, that, uh, that family atmosphere, but we also have the skills. We do have the skills. We do have, have what it takes to make that happen. Now we know many Catholic schools operate on a shoestring budget and maybe they don't have the resources to serve all of the students. What do you say, Mary Pat and Maggie, to, to that question? I'm over here chuckling because I was principal of a school that was a no-string budget at one point. <laughs> I mean, we were really um, bad off, but we prioritized this. And at the end of the day, it's about where do you want to invest even limited resources? I mean, we all accept that we're going to have a PE teacher because that's important, so we make sure that there's resources to that. The first step for me in that very difficult situation was making it a priority. Mm -hmm. um, I was very blessed to hire a special ed teacher who uh, was very well formed. He had a master's in special ed. And he came to me um, having written sort of a um, proposal for a resource center at the school. And he based the entire thing on the gospel story of Zacchaeus, who, remember, was too short to see the Lord and had to climb a tree. And this teacher said to me, we have to provide the tree. And so we, once it becomes an imperative, the old throw your hat over the fence and you got to go get it, it's, it's that mindset. And we were able to, to build it slowly. And, you know, I do believe this. Because it is so tied to that mission of, of being the body of Christ, and we can't leave people out and have a complete sense of the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit helps you. There's a way, and that is exactly how I experienced it. The school where I was principal started with this one resource teacher. There are four now on staff serving, you know, many more children. So um, I, I, I know it's daunting at, at, at the beginning, but a lot of it is trusting in God and putting those resources. And, you know, that, that is an excuse that comes up a lot, is the, the lack of resources. The, the, the fact that you know we don't have the money to do it, but I've seen many schools do it on, you know, on just confidence, belief mm -hmm. that this is the right thing to do, and you know it's amazing when you have that commitment, how much you discover, how many resources you discover you already have, human resources, uh, the just things in the classroom that work for other kids will work for our kids with special needs. Yeah. And you know that sort of universal design uh, approach to structuring your classroom and your instruction, um, that all of that comes into play. And it, it is amazing what you can do with just what you've already got, but also the belief that you can do it. And you know I think that that's one of the most impactful things I learned when I was getting my special ed degree was that I really already knew how to do it. What I learned was more about how kids learn. Mm -hmm. And, but insofar as the bag of tricks was concerned, pretty much all the tricks were already in my bag. It was just learning how to use them a little bit differently. So, you know, that's what I tell teachers a lot of times and I go into schools and I say, you've got it, you've got what it takes. Uh, it's just, let's take a step back and figure out how we're going to use those things. I think this is a great conversation. And I th think if, if I were a parent who had a child who was not being welcomed in a Catholic school today, maybe I have a child with Down syndrome or something like that, I'm, I'm wondering, how do we get there? You know, what, what does the bishop's committee mm -hmm. foresee in the near future? How do we serve all of the families? Yeah, I, I think... Um, so the committee is seeking to engage with co outside collaborators like Maggie and like the NCPD um, Catholic Schools Committee that's really set up to do this. And there are other organizations that we have been in communication with. So we're trying to get an understanding of what's 
available and, and the lay of the land, so to speak. Um, but from the committee level, it's important to note that they view this as a post-Dobbs imperative. This is a moment of collaboration with the Committee on Pro-Life Activities, right? So where we rightfully defend the lives of children, for example, like you mentioned Down syndrome, we rightfully defend their lives in the womb. But once they are born, we cannot turn our backs. We do need to, to find ways to do this. There are places and schools that have successfully welcomed kids with intellectual disabilities, Downs, and other things. So we have a, a, a little bit of an existing paradigm. Mm -hmm. So it's about sort of extracting those good practices. I think what the committee would like to have eventually is some sort of toolkit um, that we could share widely based on all of these uh, experiences and practices. Right. And, and I think that that's one of the most important things to, for other schools to realize that there are schools that have done this, have been doing it, and very successfully. So they've learned a lot and are so en enthusiastic about the successes and, and how, what a positive impact it's had on the entire school community. The kids without disabilities, the kids with disabilities, doing this has been a very, very positive impact on everyone. And they are eager to help other schools experience the same success that they have. Uh, you know, it, it's amazing to go into some of these schools and see what, um, how powerful it is that you've got all these kids learning together and accepting one another for exactly who they are and rejoicing in who they are. Um, and that's, that's not going to happen if we don't give our kids the opportunity, all of our kids the opportunity to, to you know, learn from one another and learn more than just the academics. It's, it's learning about life. And that's, you know, what else are we, therefore obviously we want them to learn to read and do the math and things like that. But what about when we go out in the world or when we, when one of those non-disabled students potentially has a child with a disability. You know, we want for them to be able to look in the face of that child and see all the possibilities, all the things that God has planned for that child and not be fearful that your child won't be accepted in your faith community or in the community at large. Mary Pat, any final words before we conclude today? Well, as, as I was listening to Maggie, I was thinking how, um, you know, the church's beautiful understanding of education, this idea that, you know, math isn't just numbers, it's a, a gateway to, to pattern that we find in creation. And science is, is about exploring what God has made. And all of these children, whether they have disabilities or don't have disabilities, also come to see that every single thing is a reflection of this divine creator and therefore it has this this dignity um, and that's really we, we really put our money where our mouth is when we welcome um, and we have that embrace and I just would would urge everyone who's on the fence about it um, to to trust that the Lord will provide mm -hmm. uh, because it is so dear to his heart he welcomed um, the children and especially those you know on the periphery so um, I think uh, on behalf of Bishop Daly I would say we're, we're here to encourage we're here to help um, and we're here to pray for you thank you both thank you Maggie and Mary Pat it's wonderful to have you here and talking about the importance of Catholic education serving all students thank you so much and thank you for joining us for this edition of Catholic Current. You can find out more about this week's topic by visiting us online at usccb.org or follow us on social media at usccb. I'm Mara Moser. See you next time.